Principality of Rejection, Part 5 Being rejected, rejected sets various defensive mechanisms in action. We withdraw from others like a turtle hiding in its shell. Rejection says, I'm not going to let myself be vulnerable. I'm not going to let people reject me again. I'm never going to get close to anyone again. This comes from an attitude of fear. Adam and Eve hid after their sin. Withdrawal from people is a defense mechanism reacting to the fear of man. Fear of failure drives a defense mechanism that prohibits us from taking chances in a relationship. By risk avoidance, we protect ourselves from rejection, but also miss much of life. Anger and hatred give us a defense against rejection. They drive us to be aggressive, fighting bitterly against real or supposed enemies. Rejection couples with the root of bitterness, and they reinforce and fuel each other. Rejection naturally seeks for a meaningful identity outside of a whole, pure relationship with God. Rejection destroy, distorts us so no one, especially us, even knows our real self. Instead, our identity should be so strongly established in God that if someone smiles at us or invites us in, it is just a bonus. Rejection looks for identity and comfort from other people, not God. Instead of patterning ourselves after Christ, we idolize other people. We are driven to have someone around us whom we can idolize, rather than making God the object of our worship. Yet, as we draw near to another human, we ultimately become rejected again, continuing the downward spiral. Rejection searches for someone weaker than us, with whom to hang out. Support groups are a popular place to find weak people all looking for someone weaker. Rejection causes us to fabricate a personality. Since we don't know who we are, we make up someone and cling to that until the fabrication is revealed and once again we are rejected. Fear, rejection, and rebellion are the volatile ingredients of insanity. Accepting who we are with Jesus Christ is our strong defender, as our strong defender, is the antidote to insanity. Galatians 4 verse 7 says we are God's sons, daughters, and heirs through Christ. A healthy self-image looks beyond the now to the future. When in Christ we are perfected. Doing so solves our identity problem. 2 Timothy 1 Possible Sources of Rejection Fatherless homes often produce children subject to rejection. Fatherless homes lack a clear identity, causing the children to miss out on the fullness of feeling loved and accepted. The father establishes the identity and emotional stability in the home. The head of the woman is the man, and the head of the man is Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3 says that I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Rejection can stem from the lives of our ancestors. Spiritual problems can be inherited. Abraham lied to Abimelech, telling the king that Sarah was his sister. Isaac made the same lie forty years later. Then Jacob lied to his father, Isaac. Ten of Jacob's sons lied to him. Sin can continue from generation to generation unless someone repents and puts a stop to it. Rejection can occur at conception 
if one or both of the parents are not happy about the coming of the baby. If a child is unwanted, a door opens for a spirit of rejection to enter into the child while in the womb. This often happens when the child was an unplanned accident, conceived in lust or between unwed parents. A bastard. The scripture teaches the scriptures teach that the bastard's curse continues for ten generations until it is broken. God gave all of us life, and he knew each of us before laying the foundation of the world. His hands knit us together in our mother's womb. God has a plan and purpose for each of us. He knows the exact number of hairs on our head and has engraved us on the palm of his hand. He loves us unconditionally and through his Son, Jesus Christ. He made a provision for us to spend eternity with him. By claiming God's truth, we break the bastard's curse for all generations. When God in Christ Jesus adopted us as his children, he abolished the curse of sin passed down from our ancestors. Sometimes parents are disappointed with their baby's gender. The father complains, I don't know what to do with you. If you were a boy, it'd be different. This can result in rejection and self-rejection. Fathers sometimes build up great resentment toward their infant child because of all the mention attention it receives from the mother. A spirit of rejection transfers from the father to the baby and that child matures, caught in the vicious cycle of rejection. Blended families are ripe for the growth of influence of the spirit of rejection. The newly married parents need time to get to know each other. Each worries over their own blood offspring and often resent the lack of attention provided by the other parent, both to them and their own children. These parents need to take great care to ensure that a generous amount of love flows between and through them to the stepchildren. If a parent dies when a child is young, the child sometimes resents or even hates the dead parent. They feel abandoned and rejected. Why did mommy have to die and leave me alone, the little girl asks. If there is strife and turmoil in the home during pregnancy or early childhood, the child will have feelings of rejection, abandonment, and fear. Adopted children often struggle with a deep inner sense of rejection by their birth parents. Most adoptive parents deeply love and provide tremendous care for their children, but many still struggle with rejection. Middle children often feel rejected because the older and younger siblings get more attention. Psychologists label this the middle child syndrome. If a father and mother, father, mother, wife, or husband has rejected you, please understand that at some time since their conception, they were more than likely also rejected. And I'll be right back with part six.